Welcome everybody. We are going to study specifically motion in two dimension and we will be, we will zoom in at horizontal projection. So we are going to apply all the principles we did last class in this lesson. And therefore it is important that you pay attention. Now by the end of today, listen carefully please, by the end of today, you should be able to calculate the time of flight of a projectile launched horizontally you should be able to determine how the velocity varies along the path as well as you should be able to mathematically prove the equation of path for, hor for a horizontal projectile. Now these are the three major objectives. They seem simple, but there are obviously some pitfalls that if you don't pay attention, you may be vulnerable to. Now we are going to begin with a warm-up question. Now, a small car is rolling at constant velocity on a track. We demonstrated this last class. It fires a ball straight up into air as it moves. After it is fired, what happens to the ball? A. It depends on how fast the car is moving. B. It falls behind the car. C. It falls in front of the car. D. It falls right back into the car and E, it remains at rest. So, um, everybody, has everybody voted? Yeah. Great. Um, now, <laughs> now, 100% of the class got it right. It falls right back into the card. We did explain this in class. So there is no reason for me to spend much time on it, explaining it again. So let's move forward. Now understand that it falls right back into the card. I gave you the reasons. And uh, the next question. Now, this is a little tricky. So think about it carefully. What if instead of a horizontal track, I now tilt the track. We may even demonstrate it. As it rolls down, it fires the ball. Is it going to fall back into the barrel? Is it going to fall ahead or is it going to fall behind? But now the track is tilted. Okay, now let's see. The pulling ended. A majority of the class says that it falls behind the cart. No, are you wrong? Yeah. No, I think it falls in front. Actually, it might fall. A little bit like the cart. The cart is still accelerating. The ball is still Okay, now let, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Can you explain your view a little bit? Let me let the class. Yeah. Because look, when it fires the ball, the car is still accelerating horizontally, but the ball it has a con after it's pushed out, it doesn't accelerate horizontally. Anymore. No, because because the ball is fired like at a ninety degree. Oh. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's still not accelerating horizontally. No, no, no but it's yeah, fired at a fast velocity. It's fired, it's fired it's up, but it seems like it, it moves in it at an angle because it has. Yeah, like but there's no more. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. which way it's fired. There's not going to be any more horizontal acceleration. Yeah. 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 But it's given a higher. The angle in this case really doesn't matter, but the most essential thing is that the track is tilted at an angle. So let's see what happens. Can I get a textbook? Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, like, if it's fired perpendicular, but then it's fired. Yeah, 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 it's Yeah, it's fired. Yeah, it's Yeah, Yeah, we need Yeah, 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 All right. Can we have someone at the end? Can we have someone catch it? So it doesn't just run off. It's going to run off the track. Somebody should be ready to catch it, please. Charlie. Again, what do you think? Is it going to fall in front, in front, behind, or in the car? In front of the car. Oh, wait, in this case? Yeah. It's the problem. Just I'm just demonstrating what the problem says. No, but the angle is. It's probably going to fall. Pardon? 
The angle really doesn't matter. What the angle affects is just the acceleration. But I want you to see something. Remember, let's observe this. The ball and the card initially are at rest and they are accelerated downwards together. When the ball is fired horizontally upwards, it's still accelerating downwards. And we know, we stated vehemently in the last class that horizontal motion, whether velocity or acceleration, does not affect the vertical motion, whether it's velocity or acceleration. All right, let's go. Wait, but it's, it's like the, uh, the direction the ball is fired is not exactly the vertical. Right, that's what I was thinking. But, but that's what the, he was kind of implying with the problem. I, it I, think, I think it's, it's tangent to the angle. If you, yeah, yes, please. Um, I also did not assume that it was only accelerating due to gravity. I thought there was an outside force acting on it. That's a question. All right, let's observe this, please. Now, it falls back inside. Let's do it again. Experimental already. Just make it really high. Wait, but that, that thing is also like... Yeah, it, yeah, it's it, like it, this, so there's more... Yeah, it's almost, it's almost, it, it was like a... Yeah. What do they call it in basketball? Like a... The, the <laughs> thing is... It's like a funnel. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. We don't have... Slow the rest. Please. He's recording in slow Yeah. Now, it's slow moist. It's actually gonna... <laughs> All right, observe again. That it didn't hit. That was right in, inside. Yeah. Right on the spot. Let me do it again. Now, who can explain why? Isn't it amazing how physics works? That, but that won't always be the case. <laughs> <laughs> that just happens to be like a uh, match. Like the time it took for like the uh, the ball to fall back, uh, fall back down, and just match that. I up. guarantee you, it will always be the same. Wait, what if you should have a super high ball? So if the velocity of this projectile is like the velocity of a bullet, so like really fast, right? Okay. Come on, you, you know that's different because it's just gonna go up and, and get lost, right? But let's say, or well, assume an infinitely long if, track. If, if the track is an infinitely long track, you'll fall back in there. Assuming that there is no air resistance. So you have to do this in a vacuum. So. Uh huh. Will this car go faster and faster and faster and faster? It will. Remember, the car, listen now, the car is accelerating downwards. Just like the ball is going to be accelerating downwards as well, even though it's shot. It's going upward and at the same time accelerating downwards. So the point I want to pass across is, listen now, this may be counterintuitive, but it's 100% correct. Even though it's accelerating downwards, the acceleration downwards does not affect it's vertical one motion. Do you understand that? I think people misunderstand. I mean, I'm, I think you're right here, but I, I just I think you, you need to explain it a little more because I would think it would the cart would accelerate horizontally as well. Yeah. Because it's going down that track. I understand so that. Why does the ball yeah. do the same? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good question. Be the ball and the cart initially are accelerating before it's shot. Yes. So the point I want to make is, even after it's shot, the acceleration does not just cease to exist. The ball will continue to accelerate downwards and moving upwards. Yes, but it will. But the ball will no longer accelerate in the horizontal yeah. direction. It will keep on accelerating in the horizontal direction. Why is it acting on it? Because that's the angle. Because there's no more velocity at rest. So you're saying that gravity will make it accelerate in that direction? Not, not have a constant velocity, but But there's an angle, angle at the fall? Understand that the system itself has an acceleration along the plane. Right. Let me finish. The system has an acceleration along the plane. So there's no force to stop it? No, because, let me explain. Right now, the ball and the system are acted upon by the force of gravity which is vertically downwards. But because the track is tilted, one of the components of the force is along the plane, on both the cart and the ball, and it's equal. 
And that explains why the acceleration of the ball and the kite are also equal. But when the normal force is no longer acting on the ball because it's not in the car. No, but then, yeah. because there's no force to, there's there's no no force force to stop the acceleration. It's not just the normal force. 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 And gravity is this way. So I think from a mathematical perspective, it's just confusing because the ball is being acted on by mg, mm -hmm. but the um, part is being acted on by mg cos or sine theta. No, the ball is act being acted on. You see, uh, but not after it's launched. No, it's after it's launched. Yeah, after it's launched, there should be no ball. It's it's the ball. ball. Now, listen, listen, listen. Let's not debate too long on this. You're taking it a little bit too further. And when we get to dynamics, we are going to analyze the forces in the system. Yes, please? We're debating it because we don't fully understand. Yeah, don't understand. Yeah. I know, I know. For me to explain the concept of forces, we'll move a little bit faster for our pace, right? But the point I want to make here is this. This is a classic demonstration that a motion in one direction is totally independent of the motion in the what? In the perpendicular direction. Now, the ball and the car are initially accelerating along the plane. Remember when we were doing vectors, please, I'm speaking. When we were doing vectors, I said to simplify systems like this, you can also orientate your, what, your axis. Initially, this is what you are used to in math. Up horizontal, this is what the y, the x, and the z. But for it to work here, you realize that my coordinate system makes an angle with the plane, and it, it will complicate the issue. So one of the, 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 the characteristics of coordinate systems is that you can orientate, you can rotate the coordinate system, and the physics will still remain the same. You will understand this a little later. So if I orientate my system like this, now my horizontal is along the plane, and my vertical is perpendicular to the plane. Let me finish, please. Which means that, which means that the cart and the ball accelerates along the plane. In other words, the cart and the ball has a horizontal acceleration, but the ball is launched vertically. And by the principle of the independence of what motion, the horizontal motion is totally independent from what the vertical motion. So if I let go, it, it gets back in there. You understand that, right? Faster, faster, faster. Yeah. yeah. So in, yeah. In, in principle, if this would go on for a long time, so like again, if you launch a bullet off this infinitely long track, then it would fall behind, right? I believe this case is imperfect. No, no, no. no because the, oh, the only All right. Now let me put it this way. Let me summarize this. We are we are taking too long on this. We have much to cover. Let me summarize this and please write this again. There are many things that we are going to talk about. One of, the one, one of the things I love about physics is the fact that there are so many concepts that are counterintuitive that we are going to talk about, especially when we get to ENM and start talking about Faraday's laws. Um, but to summarize these concepts, keep this in mind. For a given object, listen attentively, please. This will literally save your life. This is CPR in mechanics. I'm going to give you five of these sentences that may not make sense, but always works. For a given object, the horizontal motion is totally independent of what? It's vertical motion. In other words, what happens along the x direction does not affect what happens along the y direction. And this simplifies the mathematics. As a matter of fact, this is the reason why when I will take a projectile motion, I will be able to what? Tear up and analyze the vertical motion independently from what? The horizontal motion, which is just the trick to you analyzing all problems in projectile motion. You shall see the magic that will work very soon. Let's move on to the next question, please. Polling started. From the same height, this is another question that you guys debate on. If 
from the same height and at the same time one ball is dropped and the other is fired horizontally which one will hit the ground first? Is it supposed to show not. the results? <laughs> no, the polling is still going on. I will stop the poll. They will show the results. The only assumption. Listen, please, please. I, I made this statement the very first day and I've been making the statement. If it is not stated, then it's implied. If they do not, if everything you will do, you will assume there is no white air resistance. It, it's Even if it's not stated. It's, it's not about air resistance. So, so if it's not about air resistance, no. yes, it will work. No, my question isn't about no. air resistance. If you take a machine gun, <laughs> let me put it this way. Let me put it this way, please. If you go online and Google a blockbuster video about this concept where they take a machine gun, they fire one horizontally and drop a bullet. Yes, please. Not a machine gun either, um, because the velocity isn't fast enough to escape or its gravity pull. I'm talking about like if you fire the ball fast enough mm -hmm. to escape. Like, the Earth's gravitational field. Please, please. Polling index 100% C. Let's see if that is true. Let's see if that is true. Fortunately for us, we've got this cool gadget here and we'll demonstrate it. Um, is it going to fart? Yep. <laughs> if you don't believe what you will see, you can take a slow mo video of it and you will still see. Now, this is what you should be expecting. If the balls hit the ground at the same time, you will hear a single sound. But if they hit the ground at different times, you hear something like that. Okay? So be dead silent now. Let's see how the magic works. Oops. This guy is hungry. That's why he's wanna drum out. All right, are you ready for this? Yes. Did they reach the ground at the same time? Yes. yes. Thank you. So the question is, a hundred percent, now the question is why? Why do you think that is possible? <laughs> Great, that's one reason. There are actually four reasons. Yes? Because they have the same acceleration to the third. Same height, the fourth. Same time, the fourth. Let me prove that to you mathematically. Now, understand that. Please listen. 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 Understand that the two balls hit the ground at the same time for four reasons. The horizontal motion is totally or completely independent from the vertical motion. Do you understand that? They begin motion from the same height and at the same time, and they do have the same acceleration due to gravity. Let us see how this works. And I commend that you pay attention. Fortunately, this is just algebra, no calculus. We have two balls. This is A. This is B. B is projected with a certain speed V naught, and A is allowed to fall downwards. At the same height, H. Pay attention and take good notes. Let's analyze the motion of A first, then the motion of B. 
Initially, A is at rest, so the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. Now, you need to be very careful. I'm going to say this. I will still give you in the test, and some of you will still fail. <laughs> because it's something students always ignore. I'm going to pick my origin to be at this point. But in the exam, I'll give questions with the origin at this point, and some of you may still be confused. I'll derive equations using both origins, and you see that even though they look different, they're speaking or communicating the same word message. Good. Um, so let's take the origin to be at this point first, which means that y naught is 0. Therefore, y, which is negative, will be equal to 0 plus 0 minus half gt squared, which ends up with y equal to half gt squared. This equation tells us how the vertical position of the projectile varies with time. And a popular question for uh, multiple choice in APC is, you are given a series of graphs and for you to pick the right one. And this is the graph. This is T in seconds and this is Y in meters. Now, this is what happens and it's not magic. When the ball hits the ground, what happens? I'm going to do this here. When the ball hits the ground, Y is equal to H, which means that half G capital T squared is equal to H. And if you simplify, capital T will be the square root of what? H over what? 2G. Now, this is the time for the ball to fall. Do you understand me? This is the time for the ball to fall. One thing that is not actually obvious, but often asked, is for you to calculate or for you to draw the graph of the vertical velocity as a function of time. We know that, watch me now, please pay attention, Vy is equal to Voy plus Ayt, that should be equal to um, Voy, this is 0 minus Gt, we can therefore say confidently that y is equal to negative g of t. This is the equation that shows how the vertical velocity of the ball varies with time. Are you with me? If I draw the graph, it looks somewhat like this. This is t in seconds, and this is what? v in meters. Please copy fast. Copy. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, please. So, on the last position graph, mm -hmm. the, if you take the derivative of that, shouldn't you get the velocity? So yeah. Why? But that derivative wouldn't look like that. It's upside down, right? Yeah. So, but like. It's just you change the axis. Right, so wouldn't the position, shouldn't it be like decreasing? Before what it, can we take the derivative? I like his question. V will be dy dt, which is going to be what? Gt, right? What is this? No. This? Speed, which could never be negative. Yeah, so if we were to graph the position with the origin at the top, shouldn't all the positions go down? Like, it be yeah. Good question. You will, now, let's do that to clear up this little... I need for you to pay attention because any exam you will write, you will see this in it. That I will give you. What if we had taken the origin to be on the, at the ground level? Wait. I mean, since the origin's at, the, at where it's dropped from, mm -hmm. shouldn't all the positions, when it drops... Be yeah, Unless definitely. The y, is, the y axis is negative. This explains this negative sign, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, this 
takes care of this negative sign, right? To give rise to this. Let's observe something. Yes? Remember that the origin is at this point and the particle is falling downwards. Which Therefore, direction? the particle is below the origin. No, the upward is positive. Then why the then that graph it's negative is G. That's where yeah. the negative G. sign comes from. Yeah. He's just yeah. putting the negative outside. Yeah. Don't get confused. Listen. 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 Let me explain. Let me explain. As the particle falls, yes or no, is the particle above or below the origin? If it's below, is Y positive or negative? Negative. Does this explain this negative sign? Yes. Let me ask another question. Yes or no? Is the, partic is the acceleration of the particle positive or negative? negative? Negative. Does this explain this? Initially, is the particle at rest or moving? Does this explain this? Initially, is the particle at the origin or not? Does this explain this? You see that the negative signs take care of each other. Yes, please? Here, when you are substituting the value for G, take away the negative sign. Because this is the negative sign here that we've already taken out. I'm saying this because I'll say this and you may still make the same mistake. I see this every year. And don't do it. Let's do the reverse. Observe. What if, fellas, pay attention. What if the origin was taken to be at the floor level? If that was the case, then y not would have been what? H and y will be y or negative y for ex no, not negative y, just y. In that case, we have y equal to h minus half g t squared. If we draw the graph, it will look somewhat like this, where this is h and uh, this is t. So when you see both graphs, they are speaking the same or they are sending out the same signals. The only difference is where? Our origin. Do you understand that? Trust me when I say this, they will always trick you on this. So when you are reading a question in projectile motion, the very first thing that you should watch out for is the position of the origin because it changes the game. Do you understand me? Good. Now, let's move on. Any questions? Well, silence may mean a lot of things, but now I think it means you've understood everything. So, um... If you haven't understood everything, you need to ask a question. I, I don't understand how you go... Okay. If the acceleration is positive... Yes, please. Go ahead. Why is the velocity negative? Yeah. Because acceleration is always in the downwards direction. It's Can you no wait, wait a minute? Start from afresh. I like your sentence. Oh, let me. Can I ask you a couple of questions so you answer by yes or no? When an object is falling under the action of gravity, is the acceleration positive or negative? Now, assuming that the upward direction is positive. Okay. For a falling body, is the acceleration negative or positive? Positive. Yeah. Assuming the upward direction is positive. Okay, if it's falling <coughs> down, mm -hmm. the velocity, it's, its velocity is going is negative. Right? What about the acceleration? It's also negative. It's in the negative direction. Good, because it's accelerating downwards, right? Yeah, but if you change it to, to the velocity being positive, the acceleration must follow, right? Now, this is... The vertical velocity of the particle, is it positive or negative? It's negative because it's pointing downwards. All right? It's not positive. What we derived, the question they actually did derive, but the speed, 
and we know that p is just the magnitude of this guy and that's why it was positive yes please why is acceleration not negative acceleration is negative it's like the no, equation takes care of the negative sign on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. So like the G you plug in is a positive because they derived it. To oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. Wait, but I'm so confused about that position graph. Yeah. yeah. How does how is the position always negative and the, but yet the graph it should be a distance graph, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let me put it this. Let me go back where it's. Now you mean this graph? Yeah. Is the axis upside down, or is it the distance no. that you're graphing? Look at it this way. Look at it this way. Please listen, because there is always. Yeah, can you come and sit here? Yeah, you. Mm -hmm. Please, I want to say this. I need for you guys to pay attention right now because this is a little bit complicated. We have a particle B projected with a speed V naught in the X direction. What, I'm going to say this and I'm going to be real slow. When you are analyzing motion in two dimensions, Separate the X motion from the Y motion. Do you understand me? Separate the X motion from the Y motion. I'm going to demonstrate to you what I mean. I'm going to put here, this is a column. This is the vertical motion. And this is the horizontal motion. Now, in the vertical direction, the initial velocity VOY is zero. We know that the acceleration in this direction is negative G. In the horizontal direction, VOX is VO. AX is what? Zero. Who can explain why? Why is it that the acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero? Yes, please. I love his words. Carefully placed. The reason is because the force of gravity only acts vertically downwards. Therefore, the acceleration in the x direction is zero. It's important you burn this to your memory in your mind. Now, if this is the case, listen, listen. Vx is equal to Vox plus Axt. This guy is zero. This guy is V naught. This would imply that Vx is Vox. This is an important conclusion. This is an important conclusion. And the conclusion is the horizontal velocity of a projectile motion or of a projectile remains constant remains constant it does not change therefore the acceleration in the x direction is always zero let's come back to the y motion v y is v o y plus a y t this guy is zero Therefore, Vy is negative g sub t. What conclusion can we draw from this statement? That the vertical component of the projectile for B is the same as the word vertical component for A. Do you see that with me? If we go back a little bit backwards, this was the vertical velocity of what? A. We just proved the vertical velocity of B and they are exactly the same. They are exactly the same.
Now, let's move one step further. And this is an important step as well. We know that y is equal to y naught plus v o y t plus half a y t squared. I'm recording this lesson. I'm going to post it back online um, when I edit it. So initially, if we take our origin to be at this spot, therefore this guy will be zero. This guy is zero, and we are left with negative y equal to negative half g capital T squared. This means that capital T is the square root of y, 2h over g. Algebraically, we have proven that the time of flight of the projectile B is identical to the time of flight of the projectile A. And we discussed this conceptually and we demonstrated it here. Now, observe the way I solve my equation step by step. When I give homework and you just magically arrive at the answer, I'm not got to read what was inside your mind, so you lost a lot of points. When I say derive, show all your steps. Do you understand that? So practice writing down things the way you see me write them, because it's important when it comes to playtime. Yes, please. The last thing I want to do now, I want to calculate the horizontal distance traveled by this particle, and we call this horizontal distance the range. The range is the horizontal distance traveled by a projectile before it hits the ground. That is the definition of the range. And it is an x distance. Let me say this again. The range is an x distance. I see many of you listening and not writing. The range is an x distance. So we have here x equal to x naught plus v naught xt plus <coughs> half a x t squared. This guy obviously is zero. This guy is zero. And we are left with x equal to v naught t. This is the equation that defines the horizontal distance when x is equal to d, this will be v naught, the square root of what? 2h over g. This is x. So is that delta x? No, just x. There is no delta somewhere. This is d, the horizontal range d. D, the letter D. Oh, yeah, he drew that on the graph. The next thing I want to do is to calculate the velocity just before the ball hits the ground. Now, yes, please? Oh, isn't it like basically the same but opposite direction as the launch velocity? Not necessarily, and I'll show it to you why. Um, this is the projectile part. At any time t, watch me, the speed of the ball is along the path like that. This is v. But the velocity can be what? Decompose into what? Its horizontal component and its vertical component. So v is equal to vxi plus vyj. Therefore, look up vx it's just v naught. We know that ax is zero, and we have shown that vy is negative gt. Therefore, the velocity of the particle at any time t is given by v naught i minus g sub t j. This is the velocity at any time t. Therefore, the speed of the ball at any time t is just the magnitude of that guy, which will be given by the Pythagorean theorem v naught squared plus g squared t squared. This is the speed of the particle as a function of time. That is the speed of the particle as a function of time. 
But the question was to calculate the velocity of the particle just before it hits the ground. We know that just before the particle hits the ground, T is given by what? The square root of 2H over G. This means that Vy, just before it hits the ground, is negative G, the square root of 2H over G. If you simplify, this becomes negative 2GH. Do you see with me? Because if you take this G inside the square root sign, it becomes G squared, which cancels with the G below to give Y G. Therefore, the velocity just before it hits the ground is V naught I minus the square root of 2GH J. And the speed just before it hits the ground is given by V naught squared plus 2GH. You will see this equation when we get to the conservation of energy where we will derive it in two lines. That V, is that vertical velocity or horizontal or speed? What is that? You mean which one? <laughs> this is the speed of the particle. Okay, so wouldn't that be absolute value of V? Yeah, which is just the absolute value of this V. That's why it's this. Comprende? Good. Good. How much time is left? Two minutes. Probably. Maybe we have like 15 minutes. Okay. Question. Polling starts. Which ball has the greater speed at the ground level? You mean greater speed? Is it the ball that was dropped or the ball that was fired horizontally? The ball is fired So you just mean the greater speed, right? Yeah, the greater velocity at the ground level. The yeah, let's say greater speed. Let's. All right, pulling one person. Now one more person. There are, there are 22, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. One person hasn't voted yet. All right, I'm calling it one person hasn't voted. And these are points. This is your in-class quiz that you've been taking. Everyone make sure. Yeah, everyone yeah. Change, it, change the letter and change it back. Keep on pressing. All right, the quiz has ended. So the answer, I, I, I cannot know because it's anonymous now. The answer, obviously looking back at the, at the formal slide, we know that it's the ball fired, right? It's evident because this is the speed. But the ball projected horizontally vis just this. It's a no-brainer. And the class shows that it's the fired ball. The results are here. The next, I love this question. You drop a package from a plane flying at constant speed in a straight line. Without air resistance, the package will quickly lock behind the plane while falling, remain vertically under the plane while falling, Move ahead of the plane while falling, not fall at all. That will be scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 11 people has voted, have voted already. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end the polling right now. Two people are left. And these are points that you're missing. Is there anyone to know who's not doing it? Yeah, because one of the people are just present. 
No, they're working. <laughs> okay, if everybody has pressed, don't worry. It will implicitly be in the system. If it doesn't, I will contact you because I will know at the end. All right, let's see what the class says. 100%. All right, please, please, listen up. 100% the class says it remains vertically under the plane while falling. And I agree with you guys. So let's move on. Um, the next question, well, this is the end of the show.